Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. We are once again going to be filming from FBI headquarters here in Washington, D.C., and we really have a very interesting show for you today. We have a collection of chief security officers they're going to help us understand how they can help and educate board members. First to my right is Mike Mason, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Security Officer for Verizon Communications. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Jeffrey Mazenick, who is the Director of Corporate Security at General Dynamics Corporation. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. And David Mahan, who is the VP and Chief Security Officer with CenturyLink. Glad to be here. The fact of board members serving in their fiduciary duty of overseeing risks, all of a sudden up comes cyber risk, which in their careers they never had the benefit of having to deal with typically if you were a more senior director today because those were threats that weren't readily a part of the business environment even 10 years ago. And what I would like from you guys is to put yourself in the position of a director and what are the critical questions that a board member should be asking their head of IT or head of security to make sure that they are understanding um, the threat to their companies? Right. Well, one of the things I think that they should want to know is how are we vulnerable? Where are our vulnerabilities? And then what are we doing about that? One, one needs to understand you're never going to close out the threat. The threat's always going to be present. The, the question is, what are we doing to tamp that down? What are we doing to address that? What are we doing both on the technology side, but what are we doing on the people side? So when I think about the insider threat, I think of anybody who has access to our information. So that includes call centers that are now internationally based. So what are we doing in that space? What are we doing in terms of messaging? Because that's very important. You can look at technology and look for a silver bullet, but the fact of the matter is people play an, a very, very important role in our whole cyber defense. So what are we doing in that space with, with as much as 15% turnover in some of those call centers and in some of our data centers, what are we doing to make sure that that messaging is constant? So what are we doing to both strengthen our defenses from a technology standpoint, technological standpoint, but also what are we doing with the human equation? That's what I would want to know. I think there's there's three areas that I would highlight uh, uh, with from a board's perspective. Um, one, one is um, trying to have an understanding, asking the questions to have an understanding of what what is our our threat, our risk uh, uh, assessment process all about. How do, how do we do that as a, as an enterprise? And then what are we what are we doing to mitigate that that threat? So have a, a, a good understanding of that process uh, as an enterprise. Secondly. Um, I would want to ensure that we are benchmarking with, um, with other companies. Uh, what are other companies doing? Uh, what are some of the new ideas in the industry? Um, and then are we sharing uh, best practices with those other companies? Uh, and then thirdly, um, are we messaging this to the employees? Do the employees, does, does, the, does the corporation uh, in toto understand uh, what's, what the cyber area is all about today, because uh, cyber doesn't just involve data, it involves people. You know, what I would say to a board member is to think about cyber security risk the way you think about all other risks in the corporation. You want to understand what it is and determine whether you're going to accept it, you know, manage it internally, or possibly outsource it. So how do you get to that point if you're a board member? If you're a board member, you want to get an overall governance perspective on how is your cybersecurity team being managed. And there's a couple of key things I think you can do. One, I'd be asking your chief security officer, what is our cybersecurity strategy? And I'd also dig a little deeper and be asking, okay, so what are the key objectives around this strategy? And how are we going to measure them in a way to show we're progressing on this roadmap to be safer? There's a number of ways you can do that. 
but they should be able to tell you such things as, well, I'm working under a particular framework. So, for example, if I'm a regulated entity, what is that framework? Or is it the new NIST cybersecurity framework? How have you identified your assets? What is the risk to those assets? You know, there's four or five bad actors you want to be looking at, nation state, criminal enterprise, uh, hacktivist, terrorist, and then as Mike and Jeff mentioned, the insider. I think you get a holistic view of your cybersecurity program within a framework structure, like you do everything else if you're a board member, you'll get a better understanding where you sit by way of your risk posture. You always hear that you need to identify your assets, mm -hmm. but the other challenge you have is to prioritize those because you're not going <coughs> to be able to protect everything. I mean, right. there's not endless budgets to be able to protect everything. Do each of you participate in setting those priorities, or are you sort of responding to division heads and boards of directors and senior managements about what they value, or is that a collaborative effort? This is a critical part of doing our business um, in the corporate setting. Uh, we have to identify the threat or threats uh, and always um, prioritize those threats and, 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 and make the argument that we should put our resources to the most important risks. Uh, it's critical. I'm, I'm asked to do that in, in every aspect of my job. Uh, and, I, and I think the, the corporate board uh, should, should, should expect that, and that's the way we should be doing business. What would you identify sort of as the biggest risk that's looming out there for public companies, public or private companies, that we're sort of just learning about or getting our arms around? Sure. The biggest risk is more of a cultural risk and historically how the information security um, industry evolved. It evolved really more as a technical solution-based thinking industry. And as a result of that, people built cybersecurity programs with these technical solution-based skill sets. If you buy enough antivirus or you do enough monitoring, somehow you're going to be able to defend your network. You've really got to have a significant cultural change in your organization and become threat focused. Understand who your adversaries are, as I mentioned earlier. Are they nation states? Are they sophisticated criminal enterprises? Are they terrorists or hacktivists or the insiders? And then you can think about how do I deal with risk. The risk really is a cultural change, one, to address the adversary. The second thing I would say is to truly understand your network. There's the network you actually have, and there's the network you think you have. Given the volume and sophistication of threats and the number of people who utilize your network, many corporations don't actually understand who's accessing their network. And then the other big risk is the one that we've always had and hasn't gone away, Many corporations are not doing the basics. They are not patching known vulnerabilities where malware already exists to exploit those vulnerabilities. And if you can move that from a cultural change to understanding your network, to understand doing the basics, that alone will put you in a significantly more secure posture. I would say the, the biggest risk that we look at is the changing landscape and the fact that so much of our work today has been, so much of our critical work today has been sent overseas and you get an attenuation of policy and, and protocols as you get further and further away from the mothership, if you will. And the manner in which data can be ex exfiltrated today is far more significant than, for instance, when I joined the FBI in 1985 when we didn't have any, any computers. So the biggest, one of the biggest risks to me uh, still remains our people, not bad people. I'm talking about good people doing legitimate work but in unsecured ways. And it's harder to control that when you've got 400 people working here and 500 people working here in international locations. We have a really forward-leaning insider threat program that places security resources inside vendor locations. And I think it not only helps prevent exfiltrations of information, but it also helps build a more security conscious and compliant conscious workforce. And I just continue to think that that's critical. We keep sometimes trying to defeat the cyber version of the USS New Jersey with its big 16 inch guns, while the guy in the canoe with the old 38 wheel gun is killing us. I think I would answer it uh, the same, with the same uh, basic perspective, but I would uh, do it in a slightly different way. And that is to, uh, again, highlight that uh, these external um, 
intrusions uh, may actually be, fac be facilitated uh, through internal uh, means. And so uh, many of these uh, agencies like the FBI are, are reminding us to be vigilant on looking on the inside. And I would highlight the need, uh, I, I don't think most corporate um, environments today understand what, what an insider threat really is. Um, many of the intrusions coming from outside are facilitated from uh, their own people on the inside, witting or unwitting. And, and this takes a, a dramatic cultural shift to begin to build a team inside and not see this as a spy program, but to see it as a building our trademark uh, program, building our people, uh, enabling our people uh, to push the company forward. So HR and legal and ethics and compliance and security and cyber uh, working together to, uh, to change that cultural perspective. One of the things that's critical is having the confidence that you have the right person in the right place for your cyber, overseeing your cyber risk. How would you guys recommend when you really don't know whether somebody's in the beginning telling you the facts or not, okay? How would you guys, if you were directors, go about ensuring that you had the right people in the right place. I would take initially a look at your holistic cybersecurity program. Do you have one? How mature is it? Is someone able to explain it to you? And then as a board member, you'd also want to be trained at a very high level, just like you are in many other financial matters that you have oversight over. And you get a high level understanding through the board training program on what cybersecurity is. And then I would, if you had any doubts at that point, bring in a third party to conduct an assessment. There's some very good firms out there. And I think it's always helpful to have third party confirmation that you have the right team in place and you have the right roadmap to make your corporation as secure as possible. Anything to add to that? Well, I would just look at, uh, first of all, having a well-defined version of what the threat is, and then I'd ask for metrics of success. I'd develop a relationship. I'd want to develop a relationship. If I was a, a director on a board, I'd want to know what is it we're combating against? What does an anomalous situation look like? What are we measuring against? What's the norm? Because I'd want to know that they were engaged with that. We weren't just collecting data and collecting data and collecting data, but but we, we actually knew what the threat was, and we were collecting against that. I just want to know just like a, a, a business person understands when a product is successful. They have certain metrics of success that determine that a product is successful. I would want to know from my cyber person, how do you know you're successful? How do you know you're better than you were last year? So Jeff, how would you go about ensuring that you were the right, if you were a board member, that you were the right person to oversee this? How do you gain that trust and that comfort? How, what would you do? Yeah, I, I think very simply, it's important to understand that uh, the person in charge of cyber risk has to has to understand the business process. Cyber risk is a business process, um, and so to understand um, holistically the company, uh, it's not just understanding IT. It is understanding uh, HR. It's understanding security, uh, and it's understanding what that company does and who they interact with. And um, you can always bring in a uh, a super duper uh, established uh, company or individual to, to lead the charge on that IT expertise, but this person needs to understand how does this company work and how are we going to protect our information. Okay, we have about a minute left, so I want to do a rapid round here. And the question I have for you, would you, do you think the practice of hire, hiring an outside group to come and attempt to hack your systems so that you can find where the soft underbelly might be in your systems. Do you believe that that's a good practice? I think well, you have the white hat industry out there, if you will, so I certainly think there's some value in that. You don't want to have it declared open season on your systems, though, so I'd want to bring, if I did that, I'd want to do it in a very controlled fashion. Absolutely, pen testing, uh, we do it. We need to do it. Uh, you need to see where the soft, soft side, side is. Uh, every, every issue has an offense and defensive side, and you need to see both. Yes, but make sure you have very clear objectives when you bring them in, have rules and engagements put in place, have controllers, because they can inadvertently do a lot of damage to a system you know, during this process. Well, there's so much more I'd like to talk about. Uh, we've only just scratched the surface, but uh, Mike, Jeff, Dave, I want to thank you for taking the time. 
and uh, I hope that this certainly helps board members through their thought process of trying to oversee this important threat. So with that, that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week to take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.